Hi! In this lesson, we're going to talk about symbolic representation. Okay, so what is symbolic representation? You can think about symbolic representation as like when you're writing an equation for a chemical reaction. So what do I mean? Let's take an example of carbon dioxide. A carbon combusting with what? It's combusting with oxygen gas. Okay, so we're going to get carbon dioxide, which is also gas. Okay, so that's symbolic. So that's some said symbolic representation, and you can see we just wrote that equation for that reaction of carbon dioxide, or sorry, the reaction of carbon and oxygen form carbon dioxide. So that's symbolic representation, but we're not done yet because we still have something else, which is called the particulate representation. So can you guess by its name what is it all about? You're right, it's going to be like this. You're going to draw the molecules, okay? You're going to draw those molecules. Let's see, we'll add one at inside here, the atom of carbon. And here we have oxygen. We're drawing them. So, oxygen is two. This di diatomic element. Okay, we're drawing them. So, we just drew them, but still, they're not carbon dioxide. So, put arrow after they combust. Of course, you need that a little bit of energy. Uh, so you can break that energy barrier and to react so they can react, okay? So you can see that they're going to form what? Carbon dioxide. So we here we have carbon dioxide, okay? So that symbolic representation is just drawing, uh, sorry, particulate representation, which is only what? Drawing the molecules and the particles reacting to form something, okay? So that's particulate and that's symbolic. Let's take another example. Nitrogen, okay, liquid nitrogen, let's say. We want to turn from liquid to gas. So we write the equation, it's going to be something like this. Can you guess the equation? Okay, let's check. We start by N2. What? N2 liquid. Plus energy here, because in if you want to turn that liquid form of nitrogen, which is really, really cold, to gas, you should add energy, okay? So you should heat it up, okay? So we put that energy, and we're going to have nitrogen gas instead of liquid, okay? So that's the symbolic representation of what's happening. And if you guessed it right, you're correct. Okay, so that's the symbolic representation. Now, can you guess the particulate representation for turning liquid? Nitrogen to nitrogen gas. You're right. Let's talk about the box, okay? So we have a container, it has liquid nitrogen. Let's just draw, draw them again as blue. Okay, we have them N2, N2. I'll separate them a little bit so you can see them. Okay, so we here we can see that we have that liquid form of nitrogen. Okay, so we have liquid nitrogen. Arrow. Let's just put here something like, as if we're heating it with a flame or something. So it will heat, okay, and then we're going to have that gas form of liquid, nit uh, gas form of nitrogen. So we're going to do the box. So can you guess what's going to happen or what is the shape? You're right. So let me draw them with the black color so it can be different and you can recognize it. So here we have, instead of that liquid form, that gas form of nitrogen, okay? So we have the nitrogen gas in liquid form. Here we have the liquid form, as I said, sorry. And here we have that gas form. One more, one more here. And you can see here we have that uh, gas nitrogen. And here we have the liquid nitrogen. So that's the particulate representation. Okay, so we have one more point to talk about, which is... The mass conservation, ma uh, conservation of mass and conservation of matter. So, who discovered the conservation of mass or the conservation of matter? It's Mikhail Vasilvich Lamanosov. Okay, so he was a Russian chemist, and he is he has more fields, but he's also a chemist, and he discovered the conservation of mass and conservation of matter. So, what does that? say or what does it say it says that for example it's an example here so you can understand it 
if we have a chemical reaction, let's say we have H2 plus O2 arrow H2O, the combustion of hydrogen with oxygen. So we have H2 plus O2 arrow H2O. Okay? So you can see here that this equation is not balanced, but we can balance it. We write here 2H2O and so 2H2, and then we can put here 2H2O. Okay? So what's happening here is that the conservation of matter tells us that no matter what, the elements will never change, the number of the elements. Okay? So you can see here we have four atoms of hydrogen, two atoms of oxygen, four atoms of hydrogen. Two oxygen atoms. Okay, so it doesn't it didn't change. What about the conservation of mass? Let's do it. Here you can see that we have four, uh, four, 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 AMU four plus four hydrogen because we have four atoms plus let's see thirty two here. Or what? Or let's just let's just say 16. Okay, that's the atomic mass yet for oxygen. 16. Okay, and let's take off this and put only two because just let's make it easy to understand. So you have H2 plus O2 arrow H2O. So 2 plus 16 equals what? 18. That's the atomic mass unit of what? Of H2O which is water, okay? So you can see that most of the mass of water is from oxygen. And you can see that if we separate that, if we divide that by the atom of oxygen, you can see that we have here minus 16, going to left with 2, which is the atomic mass unit of hydrogen. So 2 for the hydrogen and 16 for the oxygen. And you can see that the mass didn't change. And if we balance it, we can do the same thing. You can see still the mass will never change but here we're making it a little bit easy no need to put the number of moles because we need to put more numbers and it's going to get a little bit complicated okay so i just made it easy by looking at that hydrogen it's two oxygen 16 water 18 minus 16 which is the atomic mass unit of oxygen you're going to be left with two which is the atomic mass unit of hydrogen so you can see that still the mass didn't change Okay, so the masses sorry, the, of the hydrogen and oxygen are not gone. So that's the conservation of mass and the conservation of matter. So it will never change. The mass will never change at the conservation of mass, no matter what. And the conservation of matter it will not change. Because you cannot just re react of H2 and O2, suddenly to disappear. Now this equation, it should be balanced because we said we have conservation of matter. It should be 2H2O. And I showed you in the balanced equation. Okay, so that's all about our lesson for today, and I hope you useful. Now, if you want to take a, a quiz for symbolic representation, you can just go <sighs> to the link uh, to the comment. I'm going to leave a link for the quiz and test yourself. So that's all about our lesson for today, and I hope you useful.